All right, so let us start without any further delay. Uh, very good morning, everyone, um, all the participants, all the uh, faculty members, and our guest of honor for today's event. Uh, first of all, I welcome all of you on behalf of PP Samani University for the international webinar. PP Samani University and Ames University became collaborative partners with a goal to promote academic and cultural exchange. In February 2020, students from PP Samani University visited Ames University under Global Immersion Program this year. Okay. In order to further strengthen our academic ties, we are jointly organizing this webinar. The ongoing pandemic situation not only has resulted in loss of millions of lives, but also has badly affected the global economy. One of the primary causes for this situation is our lack of awareness towards biosafety and biosecurity and bio risk management. That is why it is highly relevant and important to make ourselves aware about biosafety biosecurity and bio risk management. Therefore, EP Savani University, in collaboration with our international partner, partner, Ames University, is organizing an international webinar on an overview of bio risk management from one health perspective. All right. So uh, now I would like to welcome our uh, expert speaker of the session. Dr. Subhash Pore. Uh, I'm going to introduce a brief intro about him. Dr. Subhash is IFBA certified professional and senior associate professor in the Department of Biotechnology at Ames University, Malaysia. Dr. Subhash completed his BSc and MSc in Botany at University of Pune, India. In June 2000, he had received a fellowship to pursue his PhD in molecular genetics at National University of Malaysia. Following his PhD, he worked in various key positions in the area of biotechnology. Currently, he is working as a senior associate professor at Ames University. He has published several peer-reviewed articles, books, guided a lot of graduate and undergraduate students. And uh, he has received more than 18 awards and fellowship at several international level. He's actively involved in teaching, research, and advising students, undergraduate as well as postgraduate. In 2017, he earned his professional certification in bio risk management from International Federation of Biosafety Association Canada. As a certified professional, he is actively promoting biosafety and biosecurity. And last year, for the outstanding work at Ames University related to 2019 Biosafety and Biosecurity Month, he received an honorable mention in International American Bio Biological Safety Association's annual conference held in November 2019 at Alabama, USA. So for today's event, we have global participants from various parts of India as well as, as, well as from Malaysia and Indonesia. Uh, so participants, I have also mentioned this one before, that you will get a certificate of particip participation once you are going to fill the feedback form, which I'll share at the end of the event. I would also like to request all the participants to kindly keep their microphone mute throughout the session. If you have any question or query, please feel free to write in the chat box. All right. So um, right before we start, um, and I am going to invite my guest of honor, I just want to make an important announcement for all the participants about this event. OK, so our partner university, Ames University, is observing October 2020 as a biosafety and biosecurity month with the goal to raise biosafety and biosecurity awareness. So beside today's event, which you are uh, all participating in, they are also having nine other webinars and one e-poster competition, which is going to be held on 30th October at 10.30 uh, a.m. 
Malaysian Standard Time and 8 a.m. Indian Standard Time. Okay. So uh, I really would like to encourage all the participants and staff members to participate in that because you know you will be have you will be having cutoff marks and based on your grades you will get A, B, C. And all the participants who come in A grade, B grade, or C grade, they are going to receive gold, silver, and bronze medal accordingly, okay, respectively. So if A, gold, B, silver, C, bronze, uh, along with the certificate. So this is really good opportunity for you to get a good learning experience as well as get uh, an award. Now, uh, before we start our uh, expert talk, I would like to invite our guest of honor, senior professor and ex-vice chancellor, Dr. M. Ravi Chandran, Dean Faculty of Applied Sciences, Ames University, Malaysia. Sir, please, uh, over to yeah. you. So good morning, everyone. I think hope you all can hear me. And uh, thank you, Dr. Achina, for a kind introduction. And um, on behalf of Ames University, uh, I would like to thank P.P. Savani University, Gujarat, uh, for hosting this um, hosting this webinar on biosafety and biosecurity and uh, Ames University I think uh, we are very glad to receive two students from PP Savani uh, last year about, from Mr. Palmer from BSC biotechnology program microbiology program and Sony Mithumar from BSC biotechnology program this year we are very happy to see that well disciplined very well mannered student from PP Savani University. I think uh, congratulations goes to the PP Savani University uh, again. And um, at Ames University, we, we strongly believe that safety of student and uh, it's, a, it's a prime importance. And uh, while working in the laboratory and beyond laboratory, we, we must apply sound practices and to protect ourselves and in our environment. I think Dr. Shubhas has been doing this. Uh, uh, he's in charge of biosafety and biosecurity. It is a law by the Malaysian government that we have to adopt these uh, biosecurity features. And uh, Dr. Shubhas has been doing uh, uh, this for the last uh, two years. Uh, in this is the third year he's doing it. And uh, the biosafety and security, our university take it very seriously. And uh, we think that uh, it has to be uh, one of the practice uh, we have to do. I think um, our biosafety and biosecurity month, uh, this time we have a lot of array of programs. I welcome all the students from PP Savan University to join, particularly as mentioned by um, Dr. Archana that uh, e-poster session is going to be a very interesting session. And it's a good opportunity for the participant to get uh, gold, silver and bronze certificates uh, for the e-poster session. So with this, uh, I would like to, uh, I hope you all can come one day to Ames University and the Global Immersion Program when the COVID uh, pandemic, we overcome that. And uh, with this, I will welcome you all for this particular uh, webinar on biosafety and biosecurity. So hope you all can think safe, work safe, and be safe. Uh, hope this webinar will be enjoyable and useful for everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Um, uh, Ravi Chandran. Thanks a lot for, for um, uh, giving such precious information to our students. We will definitely participate and encourage our students. Uh, now I would like to invite uh, Dr. Subhash Bore for his insightful talk. Uh, Dr. Subhash, over to you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Arshana. Uh, I want to share my screen. So, uh, yeah. 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 Just let me stop my presentation that way. Yeah. All right. Please just uh, go for present now icon. Yeah. yeah. Window. Yeah. Yeah. And then just uh, in the yeah, you can see, right? Yes, it is starting. Uh, participants, please pin the presentation. That way you can see the slide of Dr. Subhash. So please pin the presentation, okay? You will see the two um, 
two entries from his name so pin his presentation then you will be able to see his presentation okay it's visible right yes it is okay uh i just put it on presentation mode yes okay i'm ready okay thank you very much uh, dr archana Oh, thank you. Uh, very good morning to all the participants of this webinar. As Dr. Archana mentioned, we are going through a difficult time. I hope uh, your family members, relatives, friends, all are safe and sound. So before I start, uh, I just want to take this opportunity uh, to uh, thank team of uh, PP Savani University for hosting this webinar and becoming a part of our biosafety and biosecurity month so uh, thank you for inviting me to deliver this talk uh, which is a part of our biosafety and biosecurity month webinar series and uh, uh, before i start about talking uh, i just want to little bit uh, elaborate about our biosafety and biosecurity month so if you see uh, this slide, uh, because we are organizing this biosafety and biosecurity month in association with APSA International. And uh, this one we are doing a second time. And uh, Ames University is observing of, uh, October 2020 as a biosafety and biosecurity month. The main aim of this uh, exercise is to raise the biosafety and biosecurity awareness among students, staffs, all stakeholders of Ames University, including PP Savani University students and staff, as well as other participants, those are interested to learn more about biosafety and biosecurity. So altogether, we have organized uh, uh, 10 programs. One webinar is already over, which was on global biocrime and bioterrorism from one health perspective. So today's webinar, which you are listening to, is a webinar number two, uh, an overview of the virus management from One Health perspective. On October 14, 16, 19, 20, 23, 6, uh, 26, 28, and 30, all the programs are there. So uh, I take this opportunity to invite uh, all of you to join this uh, other webinars and uh, poster presentation competition. And uh, also, I want to record my sincere uh, thanks to our Ames University senior management for supporting this biosafety and biosecurity month activities. And uh, special thanks to uh, Dr. Archana for hosting this uh, webinar. I also want to record my thanks to IBC Institutional Biosafety Committee of Ames University, uh, I mean members, for their help and support. Last one but not least one, students, those are voluntary. Uh, to uh, uh, put in place the plan and implement the virus uh, management, sorry, uh, biosafety and biosecurity month activities. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so uh, with this uh, little bit information about our biosafety and biosecurity month, so let's start the talk. So I'm going to uh, give you a very broader picture on, on overview of the virus management from One Health perspective. So since the audience is mixed, and the purpose of this biosafety and biosecurity month is to promote biosafety and uh, importance of biosafety and biosecurity. So uh, I kept it very uh, straightforward and simple, but you can always ask questions if you have any at the end of the session. Okay, let's start. So uh, my presentation, I will uh, just give you a little bit uh, background, which will highlight the importance of virus management. Virus management is extremely important. So I will give you some uh, uh, points to think about. Then I will give you the overview of the virus management. And uh, I will touch a little bit to the concept of the One Health, which is very, very important. And I personally believe uh, all the new uh, generation uh, of young students and uh, youngsters should understand this one and implement and uh, help how they can help in contributing uh, to preserve our environment and uh, contributing in making one health uh, better and finally i will give some take home messages from the top okay so a little bit background so if you uh, look at this picture 
because there are a number of global challenges our global community is facing uh, that's why the united nations member states has adopted 17 sustainable development goals uh, to uh, make the this uh, world a better place to live there are a number of challenges but if you see the topmost three challenges so these are the topmost three challenges one is a global warming because climate change because of the deforestation loss of biodiversity and uh, greed of the human uh, humans so uh, we are losing biodiversity we are losing forests and uh, global global warming is there because of uh, industrialization uh, and uh, blah 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 so it is estimated that around uh, 250000 people may die every year because of the global warming i'm not going to talk much about global warming and nuclear war but uh, i just want to uh, tell you a little bit about this background so nuclear war many countries are having nuclear weapons and how many people uh, nuclear war can kill will be decided by the scale of the nuclear war and uh, capacity of the nuclear weapons used so but if you see the important component of pandemics or uh, uh, biological risk so uh, just i mean there are many examples but i'm just giving two examples for example the flu uh, 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 pandemic which was caused by influenza in uh, 100 years ago uh, that one killed uh, around 20 to 50 million people before that there was a big uh, uh, pandemic uh, that one was i mean that one is called as black death or it's also called i mean it was caused by uh, uh, bubonic plague and uh, that one killed estimate i mean a rough estimate is uh, somewhere between 75 to 200 million people so you can uh, understand what the pandemic can do and there are many outbreaks i mean examples of outbreaks and uh, pandemics in between so and uh, the range of the people killed during these pandemics or outbreaks is somewhere less than 1 million to this uh, example uh, uh, maximum 200 million so uh, we can understand uh, what a pandemic can do so just let's let's take an example of ongoing pandemic coronavirus this is 19 pandemic as an example so this one uh, i just capture uh, day before yesterday so globally uh, 35 million 659 thousand plus people are infected with this uh, coronavirus and uh, more than 1 million people, 1 million 44,000 plus people uh, lost their life. So uh, if you see the outbreaks, uh, it can be from a uh, natural ecosystem or it can be intentional. Intentional means it can be from the laboratory or it can be uh, do it do it yourself, uh, <coughs> that type of the lab, because nowadays uh, instruments uh, you can buy, you can cultivate the bacteria at home, uh, it's possible and uh, that's why i mean it's possible uh, the outbreak can be natural or it can be intentional natural uh, it happens because when the there is a loss of biodiversity or loss of uh, i mean uh, uh, deforestation so uh, as a result these pathogens escape from uh, that ecosystem and when they enter into the human population you have seen example of what's going on now and intentional for example uh, uh, anthrax attacks so that one is intentional one so these are some of the examples so outbreak can be natural or it can be intentional and uh, doesn't matter it's uh, intentional or natural the impact is huge it's terrible because if you take the example of covid 19 pandemic uh, most of the countries were under lockdown for three months or more than three months the global economy is in trouble and uh, it is estimated that more than 70 million people will be pushed to the poverty because of this COVID-19 pandemic. And it is estimated that uh, we need more than 30 billion US dollar over the next year for the uh, development and production of the uh, COVID uh, testing kits or the tests, uh, then vaccine and the treatments. So we can understand the huge impact of the pandemic. And that one uh, should help you to understand the importance of the biological risk management. So I'm just narrowing down my talk now. So when you are working in the laboratory, 
So there are different uh, uh, hazards and uh, there are different types of the safety risks. So uh, I'm going to talk about biological uh, risk, but at the same time, you should be aware of uh, there is a uh, chemical safety issues, physical safety, as well as electrical safety. And uh, if you are working in a laboratory as a student, or as a researcher or as a scientist or uh, uh, academician. So you should be aware of this uh, holistic picture so you can protect yourself and you can protect others. Okay, so uh, risk in the laboratory environment. So uh, as a student or as a researcher, maybe you are working in uh, agriculture biotechnology or you are working in uh, healthcare biotechnology or you are working in uh, industrial biotechnology. So it uh, doesn't matter in which sector you are working. So you deal with the genetically modified organisms or uh, non-genetically, I mean, non-modified uh, uh, microorganisms or maybe uh, uh, animal microbes or any type of different categories and uh, 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 risk is always there. So for this purpose, you should be aware of uh, this uh, risk. And uh, if you take the example of agriculture biotechnology, so it doesn't matter you are doing uh, genetic engineering of uh, plants or animals. So your work starts with the genetic engineering of the microorganisms because you have to put the promoter gene of your interest, terminator in order, and you have to make the expression cassette to make your vector ready for the transformation. So, uh, and uh, I think uh, in India, I'm not sure blue rose is there or not, but uh, you can see the power of genetic engineering. So uh, this one is developed by the uh, Australi uh, Australian scientist by using the inverted repeats, uh, 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 in spliced inverted repeats and changing the pathway. So instead of having a regular colors, we can have the blue color rose, which is not available in the market. And maybe you are working on domesticated animals, genetic engineering, because a uh, huge number of people are enjoying meat of, uh, I mean, a goat or sheep or whatever it is. So uh, uh, when you are working on genetic engineering to increase the meat mass or to increase the production, so you have to deal with these genetically modified microorganisms and risk is always there. Or in case if you are working in diagnostic labs or maybe you are working in uh, somewhere in the healthcare sector. So if you look at this uh, list of the viruses, so these 15 viruses, so uh, they have killed a huge number of people in the past, and especially those are highlighted in, uh, I mean, different color. So uh, they, I mean, uh, they have uh, done a huge economic loss, social uh, impact, as well as other losses. And uh, now, this new virus, uh, new strain uh, of, uh, I mean, new strain of this uh, uh, coronavirus uh, is there, and that one is uh, making, uh, uh, I mean. Uh, uh, life difficult in every country and uh, that's why we are having this webinar instead of having face to face. So in addition to that one, outbreaks can be uh, uh, from uh, bacterial pathogens. You take the example of cholera or uh, other, other examples, or it can be a fungus, for example, uh, this uh, multi-drug resistant candida aureus. So uh, it yeah, doesn't matter you are working in agriculture biotechnology or healthcare biotechnology or industrial biotechnology, there is no sharp a dividing line between these sectors. So uh, you uh, uh, directly, indirectly come in contact with uh, all this type of work when you are working as a scientist or researcher or as a student, and you should be aware of all this uh, risk. So uh, in healthcare, because uh, if you know uh, uh, human diseases, all together, I mean, 60% uh, uh, of the human diseases are zoonotic. What does it mean? means all these originated from the animals. So when the pathogen escapes from the uh, animal population to the human population, so uh, uh, as a result of that one, we will have the uh, diseases and uh, that, that one uh, is a 60%, 60% are zoonotic diseases. And you will be surprised to see these pictures, figures or facts around 2.4 2, 2 billion uh, cases are registered every year because of zoonotic diseases and uh, around 2.2 million uh, deaths per year. So it uh, highlights the importance of uh, also biological risk management because uh, all these uh, diseases are caused by the either viruses or bacteria or parasites or the uh, fungus. And uh, 
as far as the uh, laboratory safety is concerned, because uh, laboratory, when you are working in the laboratory, maybe you are using test animals or testing some drugs, uh, either design, <coughs> excuse me, either designed by using molecular modeling, or uh, maybe you have isolated something from medicinal plants or from the deep forest and you are testing animals. So, uh, I mean, uh, 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 in addition to that one, the disposal of the waste, maybe you are testing some uh, uh, bioactive compounds, uh, efficacy or the effect on some pathogens. And uh, when you are not disposing the waste properly, uh, there is always chance it can escape or uh, if it's not escaped, the, uh, if you are not taking proper care, you can get infected and that one is called as lab acquired infection. So in addition to that one, un unsterilized items, uh, micro microbial cultures which you have in your cold room or deep freezer or in the lab and uh, these uh, risks are always there. So if you see the whole spectrum, it's, it's a very broader picture. So uh, in this case, uh, because uh, of uh, uh, deforestation, because of the loss of biodiversity and uh, all other human activities, new and new emerging diseases are popping up. And uh, in addition to this chronic I mean, diseases and emerging diseases, we have to make sure that uh, these uh, new pathogens or these uh, uh, deadly pathogens should not fall in wrong hands. Uh, and uh, that's why uh, uh, virus management also helps to uh, make sure that there will be no dual use of the technology uh, because we have to make sure that uh, uh, these uh, chronic uh, diseases or the emerging new uh, diseases uh, will uh, not lead to the disaster. And uh, we can make sure that uh, there will be uh, no likelihood or uh, the uh, your right hand side means bioterrorism bio or uh, uh, biowarfare. Then, uh, in addition to that one, uh, there are benefits. So, all this uh, is, uh, I mean, uh, important and needed, and especially the youngsters, new generation like you. I mean, most of the participants are students. So, uh, you should be aware of this one to uh, protect yourself as well as uh, others and uh, keep this planet safe for the next generation. So this one is uh, just a holistic picture to tell you that uh, how it is important uh, because uh, this one is a very broad picture. So uh, if you see uh, uh, at the bottom, so uh, this one, uh, this, this this one is uh, United Nations so all together means uh, 193. Okay, I think currently 194 member states are there, and. Uh, when they implement uh, this uh, uh, different international uh, guidelines or laws or uh, different policies, so then individual government uh, implements these policies and uh, then uh, it comes to the university or the center of excellence or research centers and uh, as a uh, implementation body or committee, institutional biosafety committee implements all this uh, what is needed to keep the students, staff, stakeholders and uh, uh, all uh, in all safe from the uh, uh, biological agents. So if there is a nothing, uh, I mean, if everything is fine at institutional level, so there should be no reason why there should be an outbreak. So uh, that's why implementing the policies, putting everything in place for uh, make, make sure that there will be no lab acquired infection or there will be no misuse of the pathogens or biological agents from the laboratory. The role of the institutional biosafety committee as well as uh, those are working in the laboratory is very, very important, especially the principal investigators. They should know what's going on and uh, their students are safe and uh, 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 that one is very, very important. So uh, if there is uh, no problem at institutional level, so that means we should not have a problem at national level. And if all the countries are implementing the right guidelines, policies, and they have uh, acts in place, so as a result of that one, there will be no problem at national level. And uh, if all the countries are serious about the biosafety and biosecurity or virus management from one health perspective, then uh, there should be no there should be no problem at the international level. That means uh, we are safe. So uh, as a result of that one, we will have a global biosafety and biosecurity, and uh, it is very very essential uh, because now you uh, are experiencing all of us are experiencing uh, what is the impact of the pandemic 
and uh, we are uh, everybody is suffering so just to uh, highlight uh, because at global level how we protect the human population from these pandemics and uh, different types of diseases so there are many uh, different uh, guidelines policies treaties conventions and international acts are there so for example if you take biological weapons convention uh, then uh, uh, convention on biological diversity to be, because biodiversity is important to protect the biodiversity then uh, we have kathaina protocol on biosafety which deals with the movement of genetically modified organisms uh, from one country to another country or uh, uh, transboundary movement and uh, uh, the next one the international health regulation this one is uh, very very interesting because uh, the who uh, coordinates all these activities and international health regulation is uh, uh, implemented to prevent the spread of the diseases from uh, outbreak site or out the country where uh, uh, outbreak happened so it should not spread to other countries but i think the whole world uh, re uh, now realize there are uh, loopholes or the gaps in the international health regulation and i think nobody will deny uh, so i think once the pandemic is over uh, the uh, the people those are in all in drafting the uh, international regulations they will work together and they will fix the loopholes uh, to make sure that uh, this type of the scenario will not uh, i mean this 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 type of the pandemic situation will not happen in the future so in addition to that one we have a who virus management framework and as well as we have a united nations model regulation because uh, uh, dangerous goods regulation so for example uh, uh, shipping the samples or uh, transferring uh, uh, dangerous pathogens or the biological agents from one uh, country to another country or from one research center to another research center or one collaborator's laboratory to another collaborator's laboratory so all these different policies guidelines treaties conventions are in place to protect uh, all of us and the environment as well as uh, to keep everybody safe so uh, if you if you think about the bio, i mean risks in all in biological laboratory so uh, biological hazards pose risk not only to the researchers but in case if it by mistake escapes from the laboratory so it is a dangerous for the surrounding community because uh, towns are around the university as well as the center of excellence and if they get infected so uh, 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 in addition to that one the environment agriculture crops domesticated animals so it is a very complex chain so for this purpose uh, we should always i mean uh, we have to practice the virus management uh, to keep the or uh, contain the microbes and uh, pathogens of the humans animals as well as the plants okay so uh, risk works risk versus biological risk so uh, uh, what is mean by risk risk is because risk is uh, everywhere in our daily life because for example when you uh, early in the morning get up uh, once you take bath and when you, once you go out so when you are crossing the road there is always chance uh, car can hit you and uh, there can be accident so uh, risk is always there so uh, how we can define the risk is it's nothing but uh, possibility that something bad or unpleasant will happen and the overall risk is calculated by the likelihood and the consequences so for example likelihood uh, you go uh, in the zoo so that the tiger or lion will not attack you but if you go in the forest and uh, if a tiger or lion see you so likelihood is very high and the consequences are deadly you may not come back from the forest but if you are going in zoo so the likelihood is uh, low and the consequences are very less because uh, uh, you are going in zoo and tigers and lions are uh, i mean are kept in a such a way that they will not attack you so risk depends on the situation this one is very very important depends on the situation that's why i gave example of uh, i mean if you are going in forest and if you see the lion or tiger and if you are going in zoo and uh, the likelihood is uh, different consequences are different so it depends on the situation okay so uh, in addition to getting exposed to the infectious uh, agents or biological agents while working in the laboratory and uh, when the pathogens escape and uh, goes into the surrounding community or the environment but in addition to that one there is also a risk of somebody can steal the pathogens from the laboratory they can misuse it 
and uh, uh, maybe they are having a link with the terrorists. So uh, cumulatively, I mean, not only the exposure of the researchers, but uh, stealing, misuse, uh, and uh, all the risks are always there. So all these risks involving biological agents are collectively called as bio risks. And uh, how to deal with this uh, bio risk? Uh, I will tell you in short time. So uh, broadly speaking, uh, I just want to make sure that you are very clear about the fundamental difference between the biosafety and biosecurity. So what, uh, what is the fundamental difference between biosafety and biosecurity? Biosafety is nothing but protecting the researchers, those are working in the laboratory, from the pathogens or the microbes so that uh, they will not get infected. So that one is all about the biosafety. So uh, you are using different types of the control measures to make sure that they will not get infected. But biosecurity, biosecurity is opposite. It means you are protecting the microbes or pathogens from the bad people. So they will not get hold of the pathogens and they will not uh, misuse it or they will not pass it to the wrong people uh, uh, or the uh, uh, different uh, uh, intention. So when you are protecting the microbes from uh, loss, theft, misuse, and intentional, uh, intentional unauthorized access or release, so that one is called as biosecurity. So this one is a fundamental difference between the biosafety and biosecurity because generally the researchers think that biosafety and biosecurity is same. I mean, uh, some common elements are there, but they are not identical. So that one you have to keep in mind. Okay, so uh, in case of the biosafety, so uh, uh, it happens because of the accidental exposure. And in case of the biosecurity, uh, it happens because of the misuse or theft or diversion, or in some cases, sabotage. Maybe somebody unhappy uh, individual is working in the laboratory and uh, that person want to take the revenge, uh, it's possible. There are many examples uh, in the history or in uh, different other countries. So uh, that one can happen and that one is a part of the biosecurity risk. That one is called as insider threat, insider, outsider. Maybe somebody from uh, uh, outside can come in the lab and can steal or maybe somebody who is working in the laboratory can steal and can uh, 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 misuse it. So insider threat, outsider threat. So uh, uh, these are the uh, fundamental elements of the uh, biosafety risk and biosecurity risk. So now the important question is how we can deal with biosafety and biosecurity risks. So the answer is effective virus management. That's why the virus management is very, very important. Not only important, it's essential uh, to make sure that, uh, I mean, all of us are safe. And uh, I think you will be convinced uh, because uh, all of us are experiencing the effect of the coronavirus disease uh, pandemic. So that's why the effective uh, virus management is very, very important. So what is virus management? So effective, I mean, uh, uh, virus management is nothing but the effective management of the uh, risk, which is there in the laboratory while working with the infectious agents, toxins, or their derivatives. And uh, uh, it, uh, I mean, it involves number of practices and procedures uh, to uh, contain the biological agents or uh, to ensure the biosafety and biosecurity as well as the containment. So uh, this one is a beautiful definition. So this uh, the reference which I have given at the bottom. So this one, uh, virus management is based on this uh, uh, document. So this one is uh, developed by the international community uh, and uh, it's uh, well accepted by the global community. So the what we need for the virus management, another important question. So virus management, uh, everybody knows it's very important, it's essential, and each and every uh, university or center of excellence or uh, company, uh, biotech company, which is involved in uh, modern biotechnology activities should implement the uh, stringent procedures for virus management. So what do we need for the virus management? We need a full support from the top or senior management of that institution, maybe it's a university or any type of research organization. We need a full support of the senior management. Otherwise, it's impossible to implement the virus management. At the same time, we should have a very competent uh, 
team of uh, institutional biosafety committee because they are considered as expert in that area and uh, guiding the principal investigators guiding the students as well as uh, uh, putting the things in place uh, to make sure that nothing will go wrong in the campus and uh, at the same time uh, competent uh, biosafety officers we should have so in case if we don't have competent biosafety officer then uh, 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 it will be very challenging then uh, virus management core documents for example bio risk uh, virus management manual for the institution or for the university we have developed for the ms university but we are still in uh, midst of implementing virus management uh, since we started uh, last year so uh, for example uh, i mean uh, virus management manual different types of sops how to handle the autoclave how to uh, dispose the waste material as well as sops for the uh, other procedures in the laboratories we generate the aerosol so these different types of the documents uh, 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 should be in place then uh, uh, safety policy of the you know city or the institution policy should be in place planning implementation and operation so that's why the roles and responsibilities are very very important virus management cannot be implemented by one person it's not a one person's job everybody should play their role everybody should uh, take the responsibility everybody should take the accountability and for this purpose the roles and uh, responsibilities are very very important and uh, everybody should be on the same page so because for example what's going on in the uh, university or institution students should be made aware of that one they should not be in dark principal investigators should know uh, i mean uh, that's why i'm saying everybody should be on the same page then uh, checking and uh, corrective actions and uh, finally the virus management review to uh, find out the gaps in the virus management and uh, uh, fixing the uh, gaps to make the system better efficient and uh, uh, ensuring the safety and security of everybody okay so virus management uh, uh, if you uh, if you see the broader picture so virus management can be divided into three primary components number 1 assessment number 2 mitigation and number 3 is performance so these are the three fundamental pillars of the virus management and uh, if you see this picture so it's just like a tripod i think everybody uh, either in the lab or at home you are using this tripod so if the one leg is broken of this tripod so uh, this uh, tripod will collapse so similarly so this assessment mitigation performance so all these three pillars are equally important not only assessment is important or mitigation is important all three are equally important so uh, this uh, uh, bias management uh, i mean uh, amp model which is developed by the uh, uh, who so this one basically is based on the plan do check act cycle on your right hand side what do you see plan do check act so this one is also called as deming cycle or deming circle or deming wheel so uh, the whole bias management is based on this concept of the amp model and a plan do check act uh, uh, cycle so it's 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 not a linear it's a circular means amp assessment mitigation performance assessment mitigation performance assessment mitigation performance so the cycle goes on and on till you make it perfect and uh, uh, there is no problem in the campus so uh, uh, same goes with the this plan do check act plan do check act plan do check act so uh, until and unless you solve the problem you can just continue and it's not a one time exercise you have to do regularly it depends on the situation so these are the common steps how you can uh, uh, do the virus management i mean uh, uh, the steps in all in uh, this uh, process so first of all uh, for the uh, understanding uh, uh, it can be a project specific or it can be a institution specific or it can be a facility specific so first of all you have to define the situation by asking fundamental questions for example what is the hazard in the laboratory or how lab procedures are completed is there any chance of uh, generating aerosols and uh, who is the host does it uh, infect the animals or uh, does that pathogen infect the humans does it infect the in, uh, i mean uh, other 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 host so you should know the range of the host 
in case of the, I mean, you have to do the, I mean, uh, uh, risk assessment or the, uh, you have to see through the biosecurity angle also. For example, who? I mean, who is the threat? Some time ago, I have men mentioned it can be outsider, it can be insider. Who is the adversary uh, uh, in that situation? Outsider, insider, if it's insider, who? And you have to uh, fix the problem in time before it becomes late. Then how? Do we have a CCTVs in uh, place? Do we have a security guard and uh, security system in place? Are you, uh, I mean, uh, uh, do you have your assets, means pathogens or glycerol stocks or whatever it is well protected? So that one, you need to ask these fundamental questions and you have to uh, characterize the risk. And uh, after that one, you have to determine risks are acceptable or not. If the risk is not acceptable, uh, you have to do something. You have to put the additional control measures. You have to take some actions to minimize the risk and then you can post it. Otherwise, uh, you, you, will, uh, you are bound to have some uh, uh, disaster in the near future or in the future. So for this purpose, uh, 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 this one is very, very important. Okay, so when you are working in the laboratory, so when you are doing the risk assessment, because I told you this fundamental three pillars, assessment, mitigation, performance. So in that case, when you are doing the risk assessment, so you have to do the risk assessment separately for the biosafety and you have to do the risk assessment separately for the biosecurity. So when you are doing the biosafety risk assessment, uh, uh, you can use this uh, five P's approach. So this five P's uh, uh, stands for pathogen. You need to think about the pathogen, procedures, uh, place, people, those are working in the laboratory as well as uh, uh, personal protective equipment, which types of personal protective equipment you need, uh, then uh, their maintenance status, if you're thinking about the pathogens, uh, infectious dose, as well as uh, routes of transmission, routes of transmission, those of you are not clear how, if the pathogen is not entering in your, so uh, in your body, there is no reason why you should be sick. So when the pathogen enters in your body, so as a result of that one, you fall sick. So there are four ways how pathogen can enter inside your body. One is inhalation of the contaminated air, which is with the pathogen, <laughs> something like this. So when you take the contaminated air, so you get infected and you will have the disease. Another one, uh, contaminated food or drink. So that's why uh, many uh, people, those are uh, eating, uh, I mean, uh, partially cooked meat or not properly cooked meat. So uh, generally they will have some infection. So uh, contaminated food or maybe it's a contaminated water. Uh, then uh, third one, mucus. For example, if you are working on HIV and a very small, tiny blood drop just escaped while doing pipetting or while doing some procedures and uh, just landed on the mucus in your eyes. So as a result of that one, you will uh, have the contraction of the HIV. I mean, of course, if you take the action in, uh, 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 instantly or uh, quickly, uh, there are chances you can recover, but uh, uh, entry point I'm highlighting. So mucus. Then uh, number four is the, means maybe you are having some cuts or wounds on the skin. And in, when the pathogen comes in contact with that wound or that uh, uh, part, uh, so the pathogen can enter. Just like when there is a no guard uh, in front of the main gate of your university or your research center or your uh, maybe uh, uh, school. So in that case, uh, anybody can enter. So it's just, just I mean, uh, same principle when the, there is a cut in the skin, so uh, pathogens can enter easily. Okay, so this one is for the biosafety risk assessment. And uh, this one is a group exercise, but uh, this one is a webinar, so it will be difficult, but uh, maybe later on, uh, I'm going to give all these slides to you, so don't worry. Uh, uh, this one, you can just go to this uh, website and uh, you can uh, download this. Uh, uh, I, th I, th I think you can see, so it looks like, like this one. So once you open this one, uh, you will see a uh, uh, screen like this, and uh, you can, you can uh, get lots of information uh, uh, from this uh, risk group database, uh, which is uh, made available by APSA. 
So this one, uh, the group uh, exercise, maybe you can do it because uh, generally I ask students to do uh, this one, uh, uh, enter the E. coli, bacillus anthracis, Ebola virus, and uh, I ask different questions. So this one, maybe you can do it later. So this one uh, uh, definitely will help you to learn more about the risk groups and uh, additional information. Okay, so you also need to do the biosecurity risk assessment. Biosecurity uh, uh, risk assessment is very, very important to make sure that uh, I mean, uh, there is a no loss, theft, or uh, misuse of the pathogens. Uh, those are deadly, as well as there is a no loss, theft, and misuse of the uh, biological material, or uh, maybe uh, uh, very sensitive information which is related to the uh, ongoing research project, or maybe some protocols uh, to make some uh, 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 toxins or whatever it is. So that one, uh, I mean, all these things can be done. Uh, by implementing the policies, procedures, as well as uh, tracking inventory. Tracking inventory means, for example, uh, you have a glycerol stock in deep freezer, uh, you have a, uh, in append up tube, uh, which is 1.5 ml. So if somebody is taking a high microliter or two microliter, that one is good enough to uh, go back and generate a huge amount of the uh, cultures, or uh, huge amount of the uh, pathogens. So for that purpose, tracking the inventory is important who is having access to the deep freezer or these uh, pathogens, that one is important. And uh, that one uh, is part of the biosecurity. That's why tracking the inventory, then uh, limiting and monitoring the access. Not everybody should be able to open the deep freezer and see what is there and uh, what type of pathogens are there. So the access should be limited. Not everybody should be allowed to open, uh, to have access to these uh, pathogens. So that's why the uh, everybody should be on the same page and everybody should work for the biosafety and biosecurity of that uh, laboratory or institution or the uh, uh, that uh, uh, facility so this biosecurity risk assessment you can do by this uh, simple five steps uh, method identify assess analyze design and develop and evaluate so with the help of this one uh, you can uh, find out where is the gap uh, in uh, biosecurity of that uh, university or institution and uh, what type of control measures you can put in place to uh, fix the loophole to make sure that disaster will not happen. Then uh, your biosafety and biosecurity risk assessment, uh, when you are doing, you should, think, uh, you should do a 360 degree analysis. So this one example purposely I'm mean, give, giving because uh, if you uh, see this news, it happened in uh, New Delhi, India. So uh, this one uh, happened in uh, last May. It's not uh, just few months ago. So the monkey, monkey, monkey uh, escaped with the COVID-19 samples uh, after attacking the lab assistant. And uh, later on, uh, that monkey was uh, spotted uh, chewing the sample kits. And uh, uh, this one is a good example. So not only biosafety, but biosecurity is also very, very important. So uh, can you imagine uh, uh, something like this one happens and when you have the cultures of the dangerous pathogens, uh, this uh, I mean, uh, uh, happened in Delhi uh, with the coronavirus uh, sam sorry, samples from the COVID-19 uh, uh, patients. And uh, that's why when you are thinking about the biosafety and biosecurity of the facility or laboratory, you should think, uh, three, I mean, you should do the 360 degree analysis. Okay, let's move on. So. Uh, when you find out or when you do the a robust risk assessment, so uh, you will know what is the gap in the system. And uh, based on that one, you can uh, put in place the right control measures. So there are five different approaches which you can uh, use to mitigate the risk. So first one is elimination. Second one is substitution. Third one is engineering controls. Fourth one is administrative controls and fifth one is personal protective equipment. So if you see the hierarchy, means which one is effective, which one is less effective. So uh, if you see this uh, triangle, uh, which is very popular triangle, hierarchy. So personal protective equipment, uh, for example, you take the example of the mask, which you are using to protect yourself from the uh, uh, coronavirus. So that one is one example, the mask which you use. And uh, elimination, for example, if you don't have the facility in the laboratory to handle the uh, coronavirus or uh, if you don't, sorry, if you don't have the facility to handle, for example, uh, Ebola. 
so uh, you should not bring uh, ebola sample in the campus elimination means uh, uh, make sure that that one is not there physically elimination substitution so for example those of you are working on cdna library construction uh, so it's not necessary you should use the pathogenic culture to make a cdna library just use the simple one e coli so you are using e coli for the cdna library construction substitution but but at the same time you can use other dangerous uh, bacterial pathogens for the uh, cdna library construction so this one is an example of substitution engineering control you are using the uh, i mean uh, biosafety cabinet and uh, other different types of the uh, uh, engineering controls to protect the researchers administrative administrative control maybe i will give some examples for example everywhere when you go now they check your temperature if the temperature is within uh, 36 to 37 uh, you are consider okay it's normal temperature uh, but if it's uh, going beyond uh, 37.3 uh, or above then uh, uh, i mean we can find out some risk is there another one uh, that's why i mean uh, uh, in addition to temperature physical distancing we are asking and we are recommending to everybody they should be at least 1 meter distance but in crowded countries like in india uh, it is very difficult to practice uh, uh, and it's very challenging so but the physical distancing then a temperature check then a regular hand washing so all this i mean these are administrative controls so this one is one example and pp the mask which you use so these are i mean some uh, uh, control measures so if effectiveness if you see so the pp is less effective elimination is the most effective because if you are not bringing the dangerous pathogen in campus there is a uh, no need to worry or maybe I, i will give another example so shark is dangerous shark is dangerous but if you are not going in a sea where the sharks are there so then uh, you no need to worry about the uh, risk posed by the sharks so that's why elimination is the most effective and in case of the pp uh, it's a least effective but it's very very essential okay so let's move on so uh, then uh, this uh, uh, bio risk management performance this one is the third pillar of the amp model assessment mitigation performance assessment mitigation performance so this uh, performance uh, this one is the third uh fundamental pillar of the uh, amp model so this one is just like grading the student so for example uh, academic academicians those are in this virtual room and listening to me so uh, we do a uh, uh, marking of the answer scripts and we find out how many students are in a how many are in b how many are in c and d uh, i mean the system may be different this one is based on the american system so in system in india may be little bit different or in malaysia maybe it's little bit different so in this case uh, what we are doing uh, how the bias management system is performing whether it's outstanding or it's unsatisfactory or it's uh, very good or it's uh, just satisfactory so that grading can be done by doing a, a performance evaluation and uh, that one is very very important that's why i told you this assessment mitigation performance all these fundamental three pillars are equally important and uh, that's why you have to do the performance uh, sincerely to find out uh, how it is working so this uh, performance is a third pillar of the virus management model and uh, 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 it helps you to minimize the risk when you are uh, for example there are many uh, lab acquired infections so that means something is wrong in the laboratory or maybe there are some uh, accidents happening again and again in the laboratory that means something is wrong in the laboratory so you have to see the performance uh, based on number of indicators and uh, based on that one you have to implement the mitigation measures to make sure that it will not happen or uh, you can minimize the risk uh, the level of the risk to make sure that it's uh, within uh, within uh, acceptable range so this uh, i mean there are number of tools how you can do the virus management performance you can do the audits audits can be done uh, annually or six monthly or quarterly depends on situation because if the facility is uh, a4 uh, sorry uh, bsl4 then uh, risk is very high or uh, you are starting new project so then audit can be done uh, i mean it's not not necessary you should wait for one year so you can you can uh, do uh, maybe uh, once in a six month then inspections inspections you can do regu- regularly in a standard format or maybe it's a spot check without uh, informing anybody from the laboratory you can just go and see the real situation but in that case 
uh, I mean, uh, there will be a shock for the students and the researchers, those are working there. So uh, each and every uh, uh, this tool, uh, tool do have some advantages and disadvantages. So uh, for example, you can take the, I mean, uh, you can interview the uh, researchers or students, those are working in the laboratory and uh, you can find out the gaps. And uh, uh, training, training is done, uh, uh, workshops are conducted, then you can see the efficacy of the workshops. And incident report, this one is important, number six, incident reports. So when there is accident, something broken, or maybe you have uh, uh, by mistake, uh, uh, I mean, uh, 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 conical flask or the universal bottle, or whatever, I mean, in which you are culturing the microbes or the bacteria, uh, slipped from your hand and it's broken. So all the microbes are everywhere on the uh, floor. So in that case, uh, incident report, uh, reporting is very important to find out the root cause. But uh, in many laboratories, uh, I'm not talking about, uh, I mean, uh, Malaysia, uh, I'm, not, I'm talking about the overall situation. So uh, incident report, uh, uh, students or the, those are in all in incident, they are reluctant uh, to report it because they think uh, laboratory manager will penalize or supervisor will scold and penalize or management will be very angry. So they don't report the incident, but uh, uh, that one, uh, I mean, incident reporting should be encouraged. So as a result of that one, we can identify the gaps and we can make the system better for this purpose. So these are the different tools. So just a little bit I want to touch upon on One Health. So this One Health, uh, because we need a uh, best life. That's why we are developing, I mean, we are doing lots of things. I mean, as a human, we are, uh, I mean, uh, different as compared to animals and other organisms. So, but uh, only human health if we are thinking uh, it's not right because humans cannot be healthy if the animals are not healthy humans cannot be healthy if the environment is not healthy animals will not be healthy if the environment is not healthy so it's it's a complex thing i uh, sorry it's a complex situation so for this purpose uh, in order to have a better health in order to enjoy the better health so environment should be healthy Animals should be healthy, and uh, for this purpose, I mean, a uh, uh, global community uh, need to think uh, about this one and this whole concept where there is optimal health for humans, optimal health for environment, and optimal health for the animals. So this uh, optimal health for all these uh, uh, three components, uh, it's, it's called as one health. And uh, global community need to, I mean, global community is promoting this one health concept to make sure that uh, uh, we'll not have pandemics like this, we'll not have uh, 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 outbreaks time to time. As I mentioned uh, before, so uh, uh, biodiversity conservation, uh, minimizing the deforestation and uh, uh, minimizing the uh, impact of the climate change. Uh, maybe sm small, small islands or small, small countries will go under the water uh, when the temperature is increasing. So this One Health the concept we need to uh, promote and uh, it's a very very important for the global community and on top of that uh, this uh, effective virus management can serve as a gear to boost the one health and as a result of that one if the one health is uh, wonderful that means uh, human population is healthy animal population is healthy environment is healthy so as a result of that one uh, it will be it will boost the global sustainable development and uh, it is very, very uh, essential. And uh, in line with the global agenda, uh, uh, 17 sustainable development goals, those are accepted by the global community. So uh, to achieve this uh, 17 sustainable uh, development goals, so the One Health is very, very important or uh, it's a, a key uh, component uh, for the sustainable development. So by the 2030, we were supposed to uh, make this world as a better place by implementing the global agenda and to achieve the goals under 17 sustainable development goals. But now because of this pandemic, uh, uh, outcome could be different because the global economy is in trouble. So, uh, but I want to make sure that uh, all of all the participants, those are in a virtual room, understand the importance of One Health and um, uh, uh, you, can, you, can, you can share with others uh, when you uh, go back. So finally, I just want to uh, give the take home messages. So the message number one is uh, virus management is entirely based on uh, 
TDCA cycle means plan, do, take, act, plan, do, take, act, and AMP model, AMP, assessment, mitigation, performance, assessment, mitigation, performance. Number two message is uh, the ultimate goal or the main aim of the virus management is to protect humans, animals, and environment. Number three message or uh, the number third message, uh, take home message is implementation of virus management is essential for the local, national, regional and global safety as well as security and uh, last one but not least one uh, we need to promote all of us we need to promote one health concept because as a human i mean we cannot be healthy if the animals are not healthy and environment is not healthy so with this uh, message i stop my presentation and i want to thank everybody thank you very much for your attention and i will be more than happy to uh, take some questions if you have okay uh, thank you so much dr subhash participants do you have any questions Please feel free to ask if you have any questions. Okay, uh, so I would like to extend my uh, thank you to Dr. Subhash Hore for very informative session today. Uh, I'm sure your talk is, you know, quite relevant in current time. And especially when the entire world is struggling against COVID outbreak. Uh, this session was specifically very insightful for all of us. And I'm sure my students have learned uh, and all the participants uh, have learned a lot about bio risk management. Now, uh, I would like to invite our principal, Dr. Anish Sharma, sir, for his vote of thank for the event. Sir, please. Uh, can you hear me, Dr. Uh, thank you, Dr. Arjuna. Hello. Thank you, Dr. Arjuna. Uh, on the behalf of PP Savani University, I, Dr. Anish Sharma, Principal School of Sciences, expresses my sincere thanks to Dr. Subhash Bore for conducting such an informative webinar on bio-risk management and biosafety aspects. This was really uh, a very informative webinar and it has enhanced not only the knowledge of our students, but also I think of the academicians and researchers who are the participants in this webinar. Thank you, Dr. Subhash, and I am hopeful that we will conduct many more webinars uh, uh, in collaboration with Amherst uh, University, Malaysia. And thank you, sir. Thank you for the conduction of such an informative session. And I hope whenever uh, I also invite you uh, to visit PP Savani University whenever you visit India. Thank you, Dr. Bhore. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, there is a question from uh, one of the participants, uh, our student, Vivek. He is asking, I, I will read it for you, uh, Dr. Subhash. Is it okay? Yeah, yeah, please go ahead. Okay. How can we eliminate the things because uh, we as biotechnologists need to help overcome the problems of society like coronaviruses? Can you please highlight more on elimination, like how to uh, eliminate the problem altogether? Is there is a way? That is what I think he wants to ask. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Arshana. Thank you. Uh, the, I mean, uh, I think it's a student uh, from your university. So it's yes. a wonderful question. Because that one is uh, one of the mitigation measure, uh, elimination. Elimination, maybe I will give an example so it will help that student to understand or others to understand. Elimination, for example, uh, in a traditional way, we have a bi-safety level one, bi-safety level two, bi-safety level three, and bi-safety level four. So the deadly pathogens for uh, which we don't have the vaccine, 
uh, those are deadly like uh, uh, i mean uh, uh, those who don't have vaccine or those who don't have any treatment so that one we always handle in uh, bsl4 because they are the control measures the filtered air as well as uh, security measures as well as by safety measures are very very stringent so but if that type of pathogen you are bringing to bsl1 so definitely uh, people those are working there will get infected so for that purpose elimination means you don't bring that type of pathogen in bsl1 or bsl2 because you don't have facilities so that work needs to be carried out in a facility where you have the all the control measures in place like uh, uh, bsl4 so that's why that one is uh, uh, i mean uh, hope uh, this one will help you to understand elimination means you are not bringing that uh, pathogen or dangerous biological agent in the uh, bsl1 facility where you don't have enough facilities to deal with that one or to contain that one so that one uh, is uh, one uh, example i gave you to uh, explain elimination means you are not bringing that one in campus so i give example while talking if you are not going in a sea where the sharks are there so there is no risk so similarly when you are not bringing pathogens in a bsl1 facility or facility where you don't have the control measures in place so uh, that uh, i mean uh, that that that's all about uh, elimination i hope uh, i have answered your question okay yeah thank you uh, so much doctor okay yeah i think we we wake said thank you sir and there is one more query from one of uh, my student dhruvi dhruvi damelia Uh, she is asking what happened to animal after the first vac vaccination trial she wants to know oh uh, very interesting question so uh, because uh, when we are developing the vaccines uh, we don't take directly to the market and uh, make it available through the pharmacies or through the hospitals because uh, we have to do the uh, testing on the animal models and in the process uh, i mean but i mean uh, uh, those are animal lovers always uh, they don't like it because animals will be get killed in the process and uh, but but we don't have any i mean uh, option because before using these vaccines or drugs for the humans we need to uh, uh, do the animal testing by, by using the animal models maybe it's a chimpanzee or maybe it's a rat or a rabbit or a horse so depends on the uh, objectives of that uh, uh, exercise so in that case when the animals are uh, i mean those are uh, i mean uh, killed during the process uh, those are uh, i think kill word is not right uh, euthanated so those are uh, sacrifice or so euthanated i think that that one will be uh, right term so in that case the disposal of the dead human uh, sorry a uh, dead animal bodies it's very very essential because for example if you are putting the uh, the animal uh, uh, organs or the uh, uh, animal body parts just in a simple way uh, without proper disposal procedures or without using a right sop so in that case uh, because uh, flies can sit on the meat, uh, meat of the animal as well as uh, it can disseminate through the insect so the disposal i mean uh, these animals those are used in vaccine trials are disposed very very carefully uh, with the extra care to make sure that uh, that pathogen will not escape uh, uh, uh moment, huh? it will not uh, escape into the ecosystem so that proper disposal is very very important uh, Uh, when that type of trials are going on because uh, we never know how it will escape i hope i have answered your question hmm. yeah uh, dhruvi hmm. okay i guess anybody else has any more queries uh dr subhash is an expert feel free to ask you will get to know a lot of things okay okay participants so make sure to fill the feedback form which i have shared with you okay during this session and i am also going going to share after this webinar i am going to share you know the information about all other sessions organized and hosted by amist university and also uh, the you know the online e poster competition i have told you in the beginning about that so make sure to to participate into that because uh, 
for sure you will learn a lot you will get a good exposure and you will get rewarded as uh, you know there are grades for it so uh, say for example if 10 students are falling in category a grade a all those a will get gold medal then silver and then bronze so it is a good opportunity um all right there is one more, more question from me sony one of our student uh so he is asking well we had done bio safety with hands hands on session okay that was great okay he is just sharing his experience he is not asking anything but um, he went he and uh, hate parmar both uh, of my students they went last year i mean this year in the beginning of this year for a short term global immersion program and they then they have learned a lot of hands on uh, uh, bio safety uh, uh, sessions so he is saying that uh, it was a great experience to learn at your facility uh, dr subhash yeah thank you thank you very much dr arshan i am happy to hear that uh, because during that time we conducted some sessions in the laboratory just to give them feel but that one or just tip of the iceberg you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah so um shall we wrap up now uh, yeah, yeah. yeah 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 okay thank you so much once again thank you participants all right okay uh, dr arshan yes yes uh, did you uh, give uh, i mean uh, show them link or qr code so they can download the slides immediately and they can uh, fill in the feedback form yeah i have shared the feedback link already to them if you want i can also share the qr code if you have that slide with you the qr code please display on your screen yeah or, yeah, yeah? yeah yeah i can yeah. Yeah. yes just a few seconds so uh, participants there is a quick way of getting you know your uh, attendee certificate uh, dr subhash puri is going to display a bar code if you have a scanner you can scan it and right away you will get a link if you the, that's going to be a feedback link and once you fill it you will get the certificate okay so make sure to do that and uh, if you have any other information you can always you know okay yeah you can see if you are scanner please uh, please do that that way it is even more easier you know technology yeah. rocks this is the era of technology so yeah i i request all the participants to uh, fill in the feedback because uh, we are just measuring the impact of the webinar so i will uh, request all the participants just to fill in this feedback form if you want to download the slides you can just scan this one and you can download uh, because i want to make sure that uh, once you download you share with your uh, i mean other friends or everybody uh, just just uh, share with everybody everybody should know about bike safety and bike security yeah so as i said in the beginning of our uh, our uh, joint session that it is going to be you know this webinar is mainly hosted to spread the awareness about bio safety bio security and how to how to take care of those things so make sure you know our society is very well uh, aware of these things so that is one of the major issues these days so please um, spread the words among your friends all right okay that's all for today okay mm -hmm. students okay thank you so much dr subhash once once again we really want to thank you for for a splendid session thanks a lot okay everyone okay bye bye have a great day okay bye bye everybody thank you